Ontario Premier Doug Ford said in his words, you are just blowing smoke by tearing up the deal with the Liberals and that you will not trigger an election before October 2025. So how do you respond to his criticism and criticism from others that this was political posturing? I think Doug Ford needs to worry about delivering health care for people in Canada instead of being obsessed with alcohol. Right. If people people in Ontario can't get the health care they need, they're struggling with the cost of living, and he's obsessed with alcohol and convenience stores. Like, I don't know any person that I've sp spoken to when I tour Ontario, when I'm in the, in the communities that say that that's their number one pressing issue. They say we need to build afford our groceries, we need to be able to find a, a home that we can afford, we need to get health care. I think Doug Ford should focus on those things instead of being stuck on Twitter. Uh, also, uh, my message is very clear. We have ripped up the agreement with the Liberals and Justin Trudeau, and that means we know that an election date is more likely. Uh, we are going to continue to make decisions that are in the best interest of Canadians. We're not going to be goaded by Conservatives. We're going to be making a decision that's in the best interest of Canadians on anything that comes forward. That's how we're going to uh, manage the next session. And we're going to be talking about our plan, actually, in these next couple of days with our, with our team about how we're going to continue to fight for Canadians and build a better life for them. When the House returns, what are your specific red lines when it comes to voting down the government? Uh, we'll be discussing more of our, our specific vision for what the next session is going to look like, and so we'll have a press conference tomorrow where we get into some more details on that. But I can tell you generally, this is our focus. We know that the two things that we have heard most often from Canadians is that they have a hard time, impossible time finding housing. That is a concern, no matter what income level you are, no matter what stage of life you are, everyone is worried about housing, whether for themselves, for their kids, for their neighbors, for the people around them. People are struggling when it comes to finding a home. We need to find solutions to that. And the second thing that we hear again and again is the cost of groceries. It is, it is so hard right now. You're going into a grocery store, spending more than ever before and leaving with less than ever before. And at the same time, those corporate grocery stores are making record profits. Not just like good profits, record profits. And so something has to give. And we're proposing real solutions to stop them from ripping you off. Better penalties so they can't rip you off. Things like they did with the bread price fixing. And putting in place concrete proposals like a price cap to immediately lower the price of groceries. We've seen that Justin Trudeau and the, and, and the Conservatives under Pierre Polyev voted against our plan to immediately give people relief by putting in a price cap. And it shows that they're on the side of these big corporate grocery stores that are making massive profits instead of being on your side. We have shown whose side we are on very clearly. We're on your side. Afternoon, Mr. Singh. Uh, Stephanie Taylor with the National Post. Going back to by-elections, you've laid out that Canadians uh, in these ridings have a choice. If they don't choose the NDP and they don't choose you, why should you stay on as leader? <laughs> I will be the leader taking us to the next election because I want to be the next Prime Minister of this country. Boo, nobody wants you as Prime Minister, man. You lunatic. Lunatic. And I know you're asking me to look at a hypothetical. I'm not going to answer the hypothetical, but I will point out again that people do have an important choice in this by-election. And that, that by-election, these by-elections, are important choices for Canadians. And we are putting our vision for this country in those by-elections. Here in La Salle et Verdun, people have been let down by Justin Trudeau. I hear that. I'm sure you've heard that. People feel really let down. They feel angry and frustrated. Well, here's a chance to send a message. You can say no to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, and you can say yes to New Democrats, who have shown you that we fight for you, we deliver for you, and we're going to continue to fight for you. That you keep in raising Winnipeg, carbon people tax. have, again, the choice about what is the vision of their country. They want to go back to the conservative cuts they saw under Pallister and Stephenson in the Manitoba provincial government, the back to the cuts of conservatives federally. They want the vision of Pierre Polyev's cuts, who is very clear that he's going to cut the your carbon pensions, tax. your EI, health care. He wants to cut. He's going to take things from bad to worse. Or our vision, which is about building up our country, building up our health care, investing in people, taking care of people. That's what we believe as New Democrats. We are better off when we take care of each other. That's our vision for the future. Yeah, tell that to the carbon tax Do you raising. see, though, as a, someone who's led this party for a number of years now and is staring down an election where you're low in the polls, it seems that the NDP saddled itself to uh, a prime minister who one of your MPs t t today said was radioactive. Do you see these by-elections as a test of your leadership? I understand you want to stay on, but do you see them as a test of your leadership and the direction you've provided to this party up until now? 
I see them as an important choice for Canadians. I see these next by-elections as an important choice that Canadians will have to make. And the choices, I think, are very clear. The type of vision that you have for our country. And we have a very concrete vision of our, our future for our country. We believe we are all better off when we take care of each other, when we looked after one another. And we believe that we got to take care of our neighbours. And to do that, we've got to take on corporate greed. When big corporations are ripping you off at the grocery stores, when big corporate landlords are jacking up your rent, who's going to have your back and fight for you? That's New Democrats. The Conservatives have already chosen whose side they're on. They're on the side of those big corporate giants. They've sided with them again and again. We've sided with people. So in the next elections, the next by-elections, is an important choice. People can choose the cuts of Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives or the hope of New Democrats. Yeah, cut the carbon tax. Groceries are going up because of that, dude. I was saying Bill Curry from the Globe and Mail. I think Canadians watching might hear a bit of a disconnect in your message today where you're saying the Liberals are done, you're done with the Liberals, and all of your comments are focused on the Conservatives, but neither you nor any of your MPs seem to be actually itching for an election. And so for, MP, or for Canadians who are a bit confused by that message, what's your response? Well, we ripped up the agreement with the Liberals. We know that puts an election date as a more uncertain thing. Just we're in a minority that. government now. So we're going to make decisions that are in the best interest of Canadians. We're going to fight like we have in the past. We've shown you before that we can fight and deliver for you. We're going to do the same thing. And there will be an election. When that election comes, I think the choice is very clear. People are absolutely fed up with and done with Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. So the choice then becomes, what type of change do you want? And that is an important question for Canadians. Do you want the change that Conservatives and Pierre Polyev proposed, which is to cut the things that you need, taking us from bad to worse? Or do you want more hope under New Democrats, who have shown you that we can build a brighter future with things like our dental care program? We can build a brighter future where you can afford a home, where you can afford your groceries. That's the choice that Canadians have in the next election, whenever it comes. Nobody believes you, um, man. Parliament is scheduled to resume next week. On a clear confidence motion for this government, how would you vote? Like I've said before, we're going to look at every vote and make a decision what's, that's in the best interest of Canadians. So I'm not going to presuppose the outcome of a vote. We will look at each vote and make a decision. Our team and I are going to discuss that actually over the next couple of days, how we want to deal with the different votes. And we'll let you know as soon as a vote comes in front of us. Hi, Mr. Singh. Nijud Amelie, Sikhneen Press. Um, Pierre Polyev has really shot up in the polls on a very conservative message about smaller government, uh, less bureaucracy, more individual freedom. Why do you think your party will appeal to Canadians more than Pierre Polyev when you are running on being towards the left of the Liberals of more spending, bigger government, uh, and, and more social programs? Yeah, good That's question. not actually our vision. I, I want to be very clear about our vision. I want to be clear about Pierre Polyev's vision. I think people need to know what Pierre Polyev is really about. We know. Pierre Polyev wants to cut your pension. So to a senior no, he doesn't. who's working hard, who <laughs> is barely getting by, who's worked really hard their life and who's barely getting by on a pension, Pierre Polyev wants to cut that pension. To a worker who works a seasonal job, who relies on em employment insurance to get them through the tough times, Pierre Polyev wants to cut your employment insurance. To people that are saying that I can't get a doctor right now, I don't know how I can get a doctor, I don't know if I can wait the months and months to get the care that I need, I'm, I'm in so much pain, how do I get through this time? Pierre Polyev wants to make that wait time even longer because he's going to cut in health care. That's the vision of conservatives, cutting the things that you need and giving to his rich buddies. That is what conservatives do, look at their history, they cut from people and they certainly give, but they give to rich corporations and their CEO buddies. That's who they're going to give to. Our vision is we are all better off when we take care of each other. We're better off when we look after one another. We're better off when our healthcare system is strong and is there for you if you ever need it. We're better off when people can have the ability to retire with dignity, when a pension is strong and is there for you when you need it. That's what we believe in. That's our vision. Our vision is a Canada where we look after one another where we build each other up. The Conservatives want to tear it down. That's really the choice in the next election. I can't believe that's what he actually believes. He actually like, really sincerely believes that. Uh, the federal government Lunatic. is closing the taps on temporary foreign workers and has suggested that they may reduce the number of permanent residents they uh, let in every year into the country. Can you lay out your party's stance? Uh, do you think that the government should be slowing the pace of population growth right now? Yes. Let me take those uh, piece by piece. So starting with the temporary foreign workers. This is a program that was started by conservatives. So let's be very clear. Conservatives brought this in as a hookup for their rich conservative corporate buddies. And what temporary foreign <laughs> workers did was allow for workers to get exploited. 
It is something New Democrats have always opposed. We're a party of working people, of labor. We're opposed to the exploitation that temporary foreign workers and that program presents. That exploits the, the foreign worker, and it also drives down wages in our country. So we are opposed to that. That should be the absolute last measure. We should always find ways to ensure that Canadians are employed first and foremost before we look at any other alternatives. So that's our vision. We believe that Canadians should get jobs first, that we should not see any exploitation of people, and this program has been one that's exploited workers. In general, for immigration numbers, we need to make sure that our immigration meets our needs. That's the way it should be set. We know that we've got population aging. We know that we meet, need to ensure that we are meeting a certain number for our population growth, and that we've got employers that are looking for workers, and we need to make sure that we're meeting our needs. Immigration should be set by what we need, and what is very clear on top of that, we need to build more homes that people can actually afford, and we need to make sure that we've got the workers to be able to build those homes. That's the way we should be setting our immigration. We should not fall into the traps of conservatives that want to blame new Canadians for their own faults for having cut in, in the building of homes, and the Liberals who fa frankly fail to build homes that people can afford. Uh, that's our vision for the way we look at immigration. It was a yes or no question Rachel there, Rachel Ayello, CTV News. Uh, you pulled out of this deal and gave the Liberals practically no notice. I'm just wondering, have you talked to Trudeau since you broke up this deal, and have you gotten any indication from the Liberals that they would indulge any further demands, let alone take your calls, heading into the fall sitting? Well, we've, I've not reached out, no, and uh, we're not trying to strike up a new deal, so I don't care to have another conversation. What our plan is, when it comes to a vote, if they want our support, there's got to be a benefit for Canadians. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at every vote that's presented in front of us and say, does this help Canadians? Does this help lower the cost of groceries? Does this help build homes that are affordable? Does this make life better for Canadians or not? And we'll make a decision based on each vote as it comes in front of us. And the Liberals have tapped Mark Carney to help advise them on economic productivity. I'm just wondering, what's your plan to boost economic growth? Left puppet. But just on, on the, the tapping of Mark Carney or, or, or enlisting his aid, uh, it does not change the fact that when push comes to shove, again and again, Justin Trudeau and the Liberals have sided with big corporations over people. They've done that again and again, and it has hurt people. When they side with big corporate grocery stores, it means they can continue to rip you off and jack up the price of your groceries. You end up paying more, and they end up making bigger profits. So they've chosen to side with big corporations when push comes to shove, whether it's corporate landlords that continue to make massive profits while jacking up rents and rent evicting tenants. They continue to choose the wrong side. And so I don't think it changes who they enlist to help them. Their vision, Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, has been to side with the ones that are hurting Canadians. We've been constantly saying, we need to build a country that puts workers first, that puts people first. And that's what we're going to continue to do.